Fox News alert. The July jobs number just into our newsroom. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the U.S. economy added 209,000 jobs last month. That is higher than the 183,000 forecast. And the unemployment rate was at 4.3% in July. That's down from 4.4% in June. But as the president brought up last night, uh, he says, I want those people that have given up that have disappeared from the payrolls, because we're only about 60% employed right now. I want them back in the fray yeah. that he actually put down that number last night. Sure. So that'll be talked about today, but also the Attorney General, Jeff Sessions, has a big announcement to make at 11 a.m. about this investigation that they are going to start figuring out these leaks. Where are they coming from? How do they crack down on these leaks? We're going to air that live here on Fox News at 11 a.m. You don't want to miss it. Meanwhile, what's live on Fox News Channel right now? <coughs> Newt Gingrich, former Speaker of the House, uh, 2012 Republican presidential candidate, and the author of Understanding Trump, a great big New York Times bestseller. Mr. Speaker, good morning to you. Good morning. What do you make of these uh, new jobless numbers uh, north of where they were forecast? What's going on in the economy? Well, I do think there's a Trump recovery underway, and I think it's Partly uh, the deregulation effort, which has been amazingly successful so far, taking a lot of cost out of the system, a lot of uncertainty. Partly, I think, it's just uh, uh, to use uh, John Maynard Keynes' line, it's animal spirits. People have an entrepreneur as president. They have a guy who loves jobs. He talks about jobs. It makes small business owners feel good. They're more likely to invest and to hire people. Uh, but it also makes it really important for the congressional Republicans to understand they have to pass a tax cut and have it signed by Thanksgiving to keep the momentum up. Mm -hmm. uh, this economy is counting on a really big pro-jobs tax cut uh, in order to keep growing, and that's part of what the stock market's all about right now. Yeah, so we were talking about the leaks and general, uh, the Attorney General making that announcement today at 11 a.m., but we see these leaks happening almost every single day now. One of those was yesterday. You had the special counsel, counsel um, leaking out that there's an in-panel, uh, this grand jury as part of this. What do you make of that? Do you think the White House should be concerned about this grand jury? Yeah, of course the White House should be concerned. First of all, anybody who has any doubts about corruption in the Justice Department ought to read uh, Sidney uh, uh, Powell's book, uh, Licensed to Lie, which is a tremendous study of both Senator Stevens being destroyed by the Justice Department and the whole Enron uh, Arthur mm. Anderson case, both of which were basically corrupt. Uh, I, I worry about the government having the kind of power. And notice what Mueller's doing. He's changing the targets. Uh, he was supposedly going to look into Russian collusion. The articles this morning say, gee, it looks like Russian collusion is going to be hard to, to prove, maybe because it didn't happen. Now they're going to go after finances. After, they, after finances, they're going to go after procedure. Uh, Karl Rove wrote recently, he was almost indicted for failing to remember something. Mm -hmm. uh, so you get into this game, uh, you have as many lawyers as Mueller right. has attracted. And High some powered, of them are Democrats, left -wing as you know. Lawyers. Uh, um, they're virtually all Democrats, and they're virtually all headhunters. Several of them are actually mentioned in Sidney Powell's book as really bad actors uh, who were repudiated 9-0 by the Supreme Court. Uh, I find this, and remember, go back and look at the IRS. Go back and look at things the Obama administration did to destroy the control of the, the coal industry. When the government comes after you, no matter who you are, including the president, you have to be worried about the sheer power of the lawyers coming after you. So do you look at this grand jury as a threat to the president's presidency, stopping him in his tracks because of something that sure. has nothing to do with Russia. Look, everything that's going on, the leaks, uh, the, what we're learning now about on masking, what we've just learned uh, from Huma Abedin's uh, emails about Hillary Clinton uh, paying off people who gave to the Clinton Foundation, all of this stuff is the deep state. Uh, the deep state's real. It's a massive bureaucracy of people who believe in liberal big government, and they see Donald Trump as their mortal enemy. And I think this is going to continue. This fight's going to continue because Trump, week by week, and the judges he's appointing and the regulations he's rolling back and having the governor of West Virginia switch parties, Trump is gradually gaining momentum despite every effort of the deep state, if you will, uh, and the swamp which it lives in well, uh, to, to stop him. But, Newt, it's also Republicans 
they are making legislative they're making yes. it legislatively impossible to get rid of Mueller. Not that he should anyway. They're making it impossible to have a recess appointment of his own nominees being artificially held up. They're going out of way and slap these sanctions on Russia, which not necessarily they don't deserve, but they need to consult the president to do it. And Republicans are more than a part of it. A lot of them are leading it. How do you explain this? Yes. Well, I mean, first of all, the swamp in the deep state isn't just Democrats. I mean, there are a lot of folks who, who there are a lot of lobbyists, there are a lot of other folks around who are very comfortable, a lot of never Trumpers in the Republican Party. Uh, I mean, I mean Trump, look, President Trump, who I think is a, you know, I think is a remarkable historic figure, and that's part yeah. of why I wrote Understanding Trump. But President Trump took over the Republican Party in a hostile takeover. He beat 16 other people. Mm -hmm. He then pivoted, and he, he, he won the presidency in a hostile takeover against the establishment. So he enters the White House with a very large number of people in both parties who don't particularly want him to succeed. Sure. Well, now uh, you're, and I think that's part of what you're seeing work lived out. Now you're personally experiencing it. Your wife, Callista, who is up to be ambassador to the Vatican, talking about these confirmations, many of them not getting through to be able to do their job. My dad's also one of them who's up for ambassador to Russia. Your wife, um, how is she feeling about things? Ambassador to the Vatican. <laughs> well, obviously, you know, Calista is practicing patience right now. Yeah. Ob obviously, she would love to have gotten through yesterday. I think she was a little disappointed that all the other members of her class were confirmed yesterday. Apparently, one of the Democrats said they wanted a recording vote on her. Uh, and so, we're going to come back, I think, in September. I wor I, by the way, I worry about people like Kevin Hassett. We're trying to write a tax bill, and we have the chief, the, uh, the chairman of the Council of Economic Advisors, has been trapped in the Senate since mid June. And I think it's really irresponsible. But, but why does it Tonight, take I mean, the I'm former more about speaker? Tasha, don't tell. Why does it take the former speaker to express outrage? Where's the current speaker? Where's anybody yeah. expressing the outrage that our government's working with, with one arm behind his back? Well, uh, look, I think part of the problem is that there is so much noise. Uh, whether it is Trump's tweets, it is the leaks in the newspapers, it is the attacks. There's so much random noise uh, that, that I think some, of the, some people just get numb from the process. And I think, frankly, to speak on Paul Ryan's behalf, he has been out there, and I've been following it every single day, he is really working on getting a tax cut, tax reform bill. Uh, and, and he's been speaking about it. He's been going all over the country talking about it. Uh, I think, and this is a key to the, to the Trump presidency and a key to Republicans keeping the House in 2018, and I would, I would give uh, Speaker Ryan real credit for having focused on that. Do I wish the Republicans were more aggressive? Yes. Do I wish they would take on, for example, all of these things we've learned from Huma Abedin this week from those emails and recognize we really should know every single penny that went to the Clinton Foundation? Sure. I mean, the, the, the Judiciary Committee in the House and Senate ought to be digging into this stuff. We should know a lot more about what's happened with the Pakistani IT people uh, and the, the 38 Democrats, 38, not just uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, 38 Democrats who hired them over the last 13 years. Right. I mean, I do wish the Republicans in that sense were more aggressive, uh, and I mm. am frankly puzzled that they're not. Well, they can't do anything now because they're all on vacation. So let's see what they do when they come for back. For five weeks. All right, Newt, thank you very much for uh, joining us live today. Good to see you. Take care.